Claire Obscure Expedition 33 has been a smashing hit, getting a lot of praise from players and critics alike. I'm loving it. It's another UE5 game that makes good use of the engine's signature features, but does it suffer from the same drawbacks that other UE5 games do, like stuttering for example, or have Sandfall Interactive cracked the optimization code? That's what we're going to try to find out in this video. I'll use my collection of PC gaming hardware to test the game across multiple generations of GPU and CPU to see how scalable the game really is. From the high end all the way to console level CPU. Speaking of consoles, since they try to target a 4K resolution output, so will we. My biggest complaint about the game is that it doesn't have support for frame generation or FSR. Like at all. <laughs> Thus no chance for FSR 4 anytime soon without having to rely on modding. UE5's TSR does an okay job I guess but it does exhibit some flickering issues. DLSS does the best job out of the three I'd say, with XCSS being pretty good actually. If you're an AMD GPU, I'd recommend using XCSS, just forget about TSR. Now, while I was at it, I did take a quick look at the DLSS Transformer model to see if there was any big differences between it and the CNN model, and the Transformer model does a bit of a better job reconstructing the finer detail. It's generally a bit more stable, but it was rather subtle, and the regular DLSS 3 works pretty well. There can be some ghosting with falling leaves sometimes, depending on the type of background, but it is rare. And this happens with TSR and XSS too, so there's no real way of avoiding it. Starting off with the first build then, it's my RTX 4090 and Ryzen 9800 X3D, so very high-end hardware here. It's essentially how I've been playing the game, 4K, everything on Epic, with DLSS set to quality. The game looks great. Now I chose three areas to take a look at. The overworld is a very demanding part of the game. It's consistently demanding. And then we'll also take a look at a zone and a boss fight actually, which is also very graphically demanding. But as you can see here, the 4090 with DLSS quality does really good. And the usual Unreal Engine 5 traversal stutters are practically non-existent, although they do happen here and there, but it's one of the better optimized UE5 games for sure. Now some zones can be a little more demanding than others. The zone we're gonna take a look at in this video is Stone Wave Cliffs, and it starts off actually pretty good. You do get a pretty good amount of performance, but as you make your way further into the forest, uh, there is some very heavy volumetrics and foliage, but enemy battles can be a good way to test out frame time smoothness too, because there's a lot going on. This enemy engagement in particular was pretty demanding. FPS drops from the 80s into the 60s during battle. Check it out. As you can see in the frame time, there's a couple of tiny hitches happening when an action is executed, which blends perfectly with the type of gameplay, so it's not something that stands out while playing. But this is, after all, my best PC gaming hardware. How will the game scale as we drop down in hardware capability? For our next setup, we're going with the RX 9070 XT and a Ryzen 7800 X3D. We're still going to target 4K of course, but we've dropped the graphical preset from Epic to High and we're using XCSS Ultra Quality this time, which is 67% of 4K resolution, same as DLSS quality. Going from the High to the Epic graphical preset has a pretty significant performance cost. This pretty much applies to all UE5 games, although if you want more refined, optimized settings, wait for Benchmarking's video, I believe he's working on one. Now yes, 
there can be noticeable difference between the two. Like if we compare my 4090 with the Epic preset, we do have better lighting, volumetrics, better shadows and foliage, but I think it's a worthy trade-off to be able to get similar performance to the 4090s. And that's at 4K with 67% resolution scaling, although we'll use in XCSS, which as I showed actually works pretty good in this game. It looks great. As far as the overall performance with this build, it's actually really good, guys. As you can see, the frame times are pretty smooth, except for maybe a hitch here and there, but overall, it's great. I mean, the 7800 XRD is a very capable gaming CPU, and the 9070 XT is a very capable gaming GPU as well. This is a pretty high-end build for what it's worth. But the real test will be the boss battle, where things become a lot more demanding. So yeah, let's take a look. Our performance does drop overall as it did before, but what I find particularly interesting here is that we don't really get those tiny little hitches anymore that we were getting previously. Now, we did drop our preset from epic to high, but we're also using a bit weaker hardware too. Not much weaker. Very interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But very impressive results here from the Ryzen 7800X3D with a 9070XT. I think this is a very good pairing of GPU and CPU for a very high-end build. Our next combination of hardware will be an RX 7900XTX and a Ryzen 5900X. The graphical settings are the same as last time. High graphical preset at 4K with XCSS ultra quality, so 67% resolution scale. The biggest difference between this setup and the last one is the CPU really. Going from a 7800X3D to a Ryzen 5900X, it's quite a difference in CPU performance. GPU, well, 7900XTX is actually a little bit faster here. Not much, but just a little. A UE5 game like this, especially targeting 4K, would be a lot more GPU demanding than CPU demanding, but still, CPU can determine how smooth your frame time is, and you're gonna get to see that a little bit later in this video as we drop down into the next setup. But yeah, 5900X holding up really well here anyway. Now, if we make our way inside the Stonewave Cliffs, well, the real test is going to be the boss fight as usual. That is the most demanding. And as we saw last time with the 7800X3D and 9070XT, we actually had some pretty smooth frame times. How will the 5900X hold up? Because the 7900XTX is a very capable GPU, even more so than the 9070XT in most cases, except for ray tracing maybe. Well guys, this setup absolutely slaps. Not only do we not get any hitches during this very demanding battle, but the averages and 1% lows are actually very comparable to that of the 9070XT with the Ryzen 7800X3D. So yeah, the overall performance of uh, Clear Obscure Expedition 33 is holding up really well. Great game with great visuals and great performance. Let's see how everything holds up as we drop down another tier in hardware, this one last time. This will be a little bit of a drop because we're going with the RTX 3080 Ti and a Ryzen 3700X. For the settings, I wanted to go with the same thing we did last time actually, 4K, but this time we're using DLSS quality and the high graphical preset. Let's see how this does. The 3080 Ti is still a very, very capable GPU, 
although the 3700X is quite a bit old and the closest thing I have to a console equivalent CPU. Overall performance, frame time wise, it's actually really good. Maybe not as flat as the previous three CPUs were, but no hitches or anything like that. FPS wise, we did just very briefly drop into the high 50s there. For the most part, we are in the 60s here, but it is overall a bit lower than the previous three setups that we used. And it makes sense because the previous three GPUs were quite a bit more powerful than the 3080 Ti. So that all makes sense. Now, because we know the battle that's coming up is gonna be quite a bit more demanding performance wise than this open area. I think dropping to uh, something like DLSS balance is probably gonna be a better idea. And here we go, guys, we're now in the 70s, so we should be pretty good here. And yeah, we did drop from 67% resolution scale to 58%, but it still looks great. It still looks pretty much the same, guys. Inside the Stonewave Cliffs, we do get very good performance here, very comparable to the previous three setups that we looked at, because we did drop our <laughs> resolution scale from 67 to 58%. But the real test, I feel, will be in the boss battle, more for the Ryzen 3700X than anything. So yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> Unbelievable, guys. I'm surprised the frame times look as good as they do with the Ryzen 3700X. Averages and 1% lows are very comparable to our last three setups. If anything, it goes to show that you can make things work with what you have in most cases. A message I want to relay more in my audience with the hardware market being the way it is, limited stock and non-existent MSRP. Now granted, the 3080 Ti is still a very capable GPU, the Ryzen 3700X not so much, and they're both around 6 years old PC gaming architectures, running an Unreal Engine 5 game with Lumen and Nanite at 4K 65 average FPS. I mean, so what that we have to use upscaling? It's so good now that it makes sense to use it, especially in UE5 games where the performance gains are quite significant and you can get an even better look at image quality. For example, here is 4K native with TSR at 100% on the left and DLSS performance at 50% the resolution reconstructed to a beautiful 4K. At the end of the day, you do you, always play the way you like and buy the things you want, but these are just my opinions around this topic. As for Expedition 33, Sandfall Interactive, I feel, is going through a similar trajectory and impact to the gaming industry as Larian did with Baldur's Gate 3, to some extent. They delivered a great overall package that's high quality, that scales particularly well across multiple combinations of hardware, and the work shows it was made with love and passion, something I'd like to see more of in the games industry. We all would. That'll be it for me, though. Please share your thoughts below. Let me know what you think. Give the video a like if you liked it and share your suggestions. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you later. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.